Everything okay, Anna? She's still in one piece. Nice about Everest, eh? Just in time for the coronation. Yeah. You checked the emergency exits? Not recently. I think it's about time I should. Exactly about time. Mr. Cowley. You know, we ought to report him for insubordination. Yeah, we should do, shouldn't we? Yeah, shame, though. Be pulled off the assignment. Well, he might even get uh, thrown off the squad. Yeah. Mm. Ah, you're kidding. You are kidding. You have to spend a whole year with CI5 before you get to call Mr. Cowley the cow. And even then, not, um, well, not actually in the building mm -mm. she's got ears like a hawk eyes what hawks have eyes well yeah well they, they, this this is true but uh, they also have very good ears i mean did you ever see a hawk wearing a deaf aid it's ridiculous did, it's ridiculous but it's true is that you want to know about the assignment well there's a stake out up north yeah we saw it on the duty board <laughs> but ears you need something like, like an elephant why an elephant well because an elephant oh have fun too yeah good luck Tom. because an elephant's got big ears isn't he yeah, well, it's got good eyes too, hasn't he? Sir Arden. Sir Arden. I have administered the last rites. Is there anything else you wish to tell me? Susie. Susie Carter. Susie. Susie. Susie Carter. I killed Susie Carter. I killed Susie Carter. We commend our brother Arden to you, Lord. Now that he has passed from this life, may he live on in your presence. In your mercy and love, forgive whatever sins he may have committed. Derrington. Oh, please, let's drop the Lord, uh, shall we? You can't imagine how much it embarrasses me. And not judging from the social columns. It seems to sit well in you, Peter. Uh, Peter. Look rather grey, George. The leg? Is still attached to my body. Please, sit down, sit down. Thank you. Let's see now, it must be uh, seven years since last we met. Eight. Georgetown. Thomasville. Ah. <laughs> oh, but how could you be expected to remember? That was a long time ago. You remembered? I have reason to remember. 
You taught me a great deal, Peter, about protocol, bureaucracy, all the things I'm inclined to ride roughshod over. That's always been your forte, George, cutting corners. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. You've heard about uh, Sir Arden French? Oh, yes. Yes, I understand it was a happy release. For him or for the men under him? My irreverence shocks you? Oh, nothing shocks me. And I know Sir Arden ruled internal security with a rod of iron. I killed Susie Carter. Those were his final words. You didn't know? No. I'm surprised it hasn't filtered down to you by this time. Well, I suppose they would want to hush it up, a security chief's final admission. And I wasn't the only person to hear it. But whatever they want, I don't want it hushed up. I want to know. Know what? What he meant. If there actually was a Susie Carter, what lay behind it? I want you and CI5 to find out. But surely his own department... Might have many reasons for not investigating further. Special branch, then? They work hand in glove with Sir, Sir Arden's department. They might be prepared to connive at a cover-up, too. I've had a word with the Prime Minister, and he feels... We feel that you and you alone are equipped to ferret this out. dream again. I told you I'm all right. You haven't had that dream for years. Not for years. You've been shouting that name, Susie. Susie. Over and over again you keep saying it. Susie Carter. Hello, Brenda. Well, well. Don't often see you boys here. I thought CI-5 could manage without us common garden coppers. Fallen on hard times, have you? That's right. Let's have a file on Carter, will you? S for Susie. Carter. S. For Susie. Deceased. Got three dead ones under that name. One was a hit and run. One was a witness who jumped from a window. One was... Yeah, well, let's look at them all, shall we? OK. Which one's this? Um, uh, That's a soul tape, isn't it? Hello? Yes, this is the Turvey residence. <laughs> Julia. Yes, I'll get him. Grandpa, call for you. I've told you before, Grandpa suggests walking sticks and walking chairs. But Grandfather has, has the, the ring, ring of, of dignity. dignity. Hello, Turvey here. Hello, how are you? Yes? What? Hey, kids. <laughs> Give me that again. We're going to set the disco equipment up here. That's all right, isn't it? Yes, yes, uh, fine. You can't mean that. But it's been years. Now, hold on. Uh, kids, do you mind private? Come along, Mark. We're going to set up the bar. Oh, did the glasses arrive? Yeah, they came this morning. Oh, I haven't had a chance to unpack them yet. But would you like to go down and collect? You have got to be joking. After all this time, it's been years since I've been involved in anything like that, and you know it. Yes, I still have contacts. All right, if you think it's imperative. I've been, I've been here before. Hmm. Police work, leg work, routine, sorting through files. I thought I'd left all this behind when I joined CI5. Excitement, they promised me. Action, but not. Not sorting through files. 
That's funny. Careful. He might break a rib laughing. Got two of those S. Carter files. But the third one, the witness who jumped, files missing. Now, Doyle, you've got to admit that is a kind of excitement. What do you mean, missing? Well, sort of like disappeared, you know, gone. By God, he was right. Derrington was right. Derrington? What did you find out? Well, it's 1953. Susie Carter was the chief prosecution witness in a big corruption trial. And I'm afraid we can't tell any more than that because somebody's stolen the file. But we did uh, get all the newspapers for the period. Might give us some more detail. What happened to Susie Carter? Thought she was Icarus. Yes, yeah, she jumped out of a window before she could testify. Jumped? Well, that's the official story. Are the officer in charge of the keys? Uh, Detective Superintendent Turner, retired about nine years ago. Did you get that address? Yes, way up north. Who do we have up north just now? <clears throat> Tony Miller. What's so funny? Call him. Tell him to bring Turner in. Betty, get me Lord Derrington, would you? Hello, Frank. Yes, this is Turvey. I'm fine. Uh, fine. Look, Frank, let's talk over the old days some other time, eh? Right now, I need help. Heavy help. Eddie. Someone at the door. Detective Superintendent Turner? Yes. CI5? Mr. Carley would like to have a word. Well, that should be a nice welcome home present to Tony. <laughs> right lived to death. What's the matter? Doesn't he like girls? Or would oh. you fancy it with a face like that? Oh, Georgie, I'll suck it to him from the shoulder cowley, otherwise known as Mac Cow. Now, in the interest of precision, Doyle, do you mean Mac Cow or Milk Cow? Because you can, the latter is correct. Eh, uh, cows give milk, cows suck her, they're young. <laughs> uh, just tidying up the locker, sir. There's no need. That's a good joke. Mm. Not my style of joke, but he would have enjoyed it. Would have. I never send a boy on a man's errand. They'll only pinch his bike. How often have you heard me saying that? Just another of my cliches. I should have sent you, Doyle, or you, Bodie. You might still be alive. Yes. He's dead. Tony Miller's dead. Susie Carter. I want her from the cradle to the grave. Yeah, but where do we start? Oh, 
I'm bad for an ex copper. We've lived well. We've always lived well. An ex detective superintendent. <laughs> With a Rolls Royce. But after he left the force, he, he speculated. What worth? Someone left him some money. So that there'd be a record of it then? Well, I, I don't know where the money came from. I, I just spent it. <laughs> Mrs. Turner. You've no right. It is barely dead. Your husband had over 50 years of life and a Rolls Royce in the garage. Tony Miller was 26. Miller? The young man? The dead young man. Oh, God. <laughs> what about Susie Carter? Susie Carter. He kept saying that name last night over and over again. Susie. Who is she? Well, there was a Susie years ago. There was a Susie. It was a case he was working on. I, I remember the night he came home. He was different, worried or upset. Oh, it was years ago. 1953. It was the first year we took a winter holiday. 1953, Bermuda. It was the first time we were able to afford a winter holiday. Susie Carter, didn't she fall out of a window or something from some hotel? The Star Hotel, Bayswater. Those papers came through. Uh, Susanna Carter. The night of June the 3rd, 1953, out of a window on the ninth floor of the Star Hotel. It only made a side paragraph. Too much going on that day. Coronation and... Everest was also conquered. The Star Hotel. I can't see the point. I'm not going to find any clues there now. Atmosphere, Bodie. Get the feel of the case. Get the smell of it. Oh, you'll smell it all right. In fact, you better get a move on before they pull it down. <laughs> Room 96. moved her here for her own protection. She's due to testify the next day. Testify to what? Corruption. Neil Turvey combines. The man's got a finger in every pie. Any government building contracts, hospitals, defense establishment. Talk of bribery to the tune of two million. There's a Watergate in the making for you. Yeah, two million, that's a lot of loot. Yeah, has Susie Carter worked for Turvey Combines? So she knew where the body was buried? Hmm. Two million. Would you push a girl out of a window for two million? Is that a definite offer? Sir Arden wasn't Sir Arden then, just plain Arden French. Defence lawyer for Turvey Combines. And now he's dead. And so is Turner. Neil Turvey's still alive. Now you lay off, Turvey. He came out of that affair smelling like a rose. Because the chief witness was pushed out of a window. We don't know she was pushed yet. And Mr. Turvey is a very important man, more influential now than he ever was. So you lay off him, for the time being, anyway. Now, Anne Berry, the policewoman who was supposed to be helping look after Susie Carter. Bodie, or something like that. I think they said CI5. CI5? Hmm. I didn't understand it either. But perhaps it's something to do with your old job, the police. 
Sally, let's go away for a week or two. Why? I thought you said we couldn't manage. Well, I've been thinking. You were right. We do need a holiday. A week or two in France, where we went last year. That would be marvellous. What about the dogs? We could call Henry. He'll look after them. A week or two away. We deserve it. That's what I've been telling you. Might even make it a month. Oh, I'll go and see to them. You call Henry now. Well, as soon as you can, Henry. Call you back. Didn't have a Rolls Royce. No. Well, this place cost her fifty thousand. Yeah, when? Nineteen fifty-five. <laughs> exactly, and she paid cash. Mm. You uh, get the same kind of feeling as I do about those two. What? Only one bed being slept in. Anyway. Yeah. 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 There must have been murder for a police woman with those kind of tendencies in the 50s. Yeah. So we opened all kind of bribery, blackmail the lot. <laughs> Jackpot. 20,000 shares purchased in Turvey Combines when? 1953. Yeah. June the 3rd, 1953, the day after the girl was pushed out the window. Turvey. Gotta be. I've seen Turvey's pictures. Who hasn't? We've got a good PR man. He's in all the social columns, you know. He dyes his hair. What? Well, he must be close to 70, yet his hair's jet black. So? Dyes his hair? No, no, you're missing my point. He fights his age. And whatever happens to stand in his way. Oh, I see you, Batman. But Cowley told us to lay off. Yeah, that was before Tony Miller was killed. And Anne Berry. And it all points to Turvey. Only circumstantially. Oh, knock it off, Ray. You're not in the force now, and this outfit a hunch is a hunch. It's a hunch is a hunch is a hunch. I know. I've nicked villains before and had them slip through my fingers, and then watch them stick two fingers up at me from the dock. What we've got on Turvey won't hold up in court. It will eventually. First catch your Turvey. Gentlemen. Uh, my granddaughter said police. Not exactly, Mr. Turvey. I'm Doyle. He's Bodie. CI-5. Ah, oh, sort of police. Not even close. Police can be corruptible. And you're not here to argue semantics. And I hope you don't regard a drink as the first seeds of corruption. I ask because I have here some particularly good malt scotch. Too early? Well, perhaps you'll allow me. Now, I want to help all I can. Help? Uh. <laughs> if you earned as much property as I do, that makes sense. My relationship with the police, and I 
I know you don't quite come into that category, has always been very amicable. Albert. I beg your pardon? Anne Berry. What? We've just come from looking at Anne Berry. She was shot. About there. Ever seen what a high-velocity bullet can do at close range? Who the devil is Anne Berry? You ought to know. She had shares in your company. Shares? Are you crazy? Have you any idea how many shareholders yeah, there are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you see, she uh, acquired her shares June the 3rd, 1953. The day after Susie Carter died. Susie Carter? And who's Susie Carter? He's forgotten. Amnesia? Mm, convenient amnesia. You know, that's sometimes brought on by a blow on the head. And sometimes miraculously restored the same way. Neil? Ah, uh, Neil, I'm just leaving. I'll see you at the club later. Everything all right? Ah, Freddy, um... Let me introduce, uh... What is it? Uh, Doyle and Bodie, um, CI5. I think we've met. Yes, you would have, when you headed the Home Office investigation. Sir Frederick Tallon. Sir? Yes, yes, you work with Cowley. Give him my regards. I'll see you later, Neil. Freddy, everything isn't all right. What? You asked me whether everything was all right. It isn't. These two men have been using stormtrooper tactics against me. Against me, Freddy. For what reason? No reason. Three people have been shot. In the last 24 hours. What's the connection with Mr. Turvey here? Is it a matter of evidence? Solid evidence? Is it? I see. Doyle and Bodie. I'll remember those names. And don't worry, Neil. I'll take it up with Cowley, personally. Thank you, Freddy. Sorry you wouldn't join me. Ah, oh, yes, you're particularly good malt scotch. Well, I tell you, Mr. Turvey, you can take your particularly good malt scotch and shove it up your partic... Don't. Good day, Mr. Turvey. I told you to lay off, Turvey, I told you, but no! You go charging in against my orders. Are you deaf or something? Are you just plain pig ignorant? Steady on, he just took a glass of scotch in the face. Scotch? Pure malt, particularly good. Then you're not just deaf, you're daft. A pure malt scotch in a face like yours. Oh, you're angry, eh? Deep down frustrated, want to punch someone in the face angry. You know, my karate master taught me about anger. Channel it, he said. Take it, he said. Let it throb up through your body, let it build and grow and then concentrate it, let it, let it burst out through your fingers. <sighs> Have a scotch. It's malt and it's pure. And for your edification, there is no such thing as a particularly good one. They're all damn good. And don't go wasting over that face of yours. Aim for your mouth. Now, to concentrate that anger. Files. Files. The newspaper files. Every word ever written about the Susie Carter affair. We did go through them, sir. A hundred times. And then make it a hundred and one. Betty's got them all laid out ready for you. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, sir. It's all too simple. Turner. Detective Superintendent Turner, suitably bribed as officer in charge, walks right past the man on the door. Inside the room, also bribed, policewoman Anne Berry. And between the two of them, they bundle Susie Carter out of the window. What, Neil Turvey foots the bill? And the whole thing set up by the defence lawyer, the lately deceased Arden French. No case against Turvey, so case closed. Say that bit again. Case closed. No, no, the first bit. Turner. She walks straight past the man on the door. The man on the door. Bobby, we'll make a detective out of you, yeah? Yeah. Well, I think it's back to the files, don't you?
breakfast, Angus. Aye, it is. And it's going to be a fine day for the hunt. There, Mr. Hamer. Did you ever see such a beastie? He's all yours for the taking. What's more, if you miss him, you still have him. If you do miss him, he has but one emergency exit. You check the emergency exits. It's about time I should. Exactly about time. Mr. Hamer! I'm sorry. I was miles away. Years away. Too late, Mr. Hamer. You've missed him. Sorry. But at least I saw him. No, but that's not what we're here for, is it? You're paying me to do more than to see him. Oh, well, he has nowhere to go but further up the valley. He's still ours, but it's a long hike. Neil Turvey's alleged involvement was thoroughly investigated at the time and nothing was proved against him. And now, 25 years later, there's still no proof. It's the status quo. Except that I'm now a man short. No, it's Miller. I'm sorry about that. I'm not as sorry as Neil Turvey will be one day. Look, lay off Turvey, George. There's nothing to pursue there. Uh, perhaps not, but I'll remember it. Tuck it away. I'm beginning to wish I hadn't reopened old wounds in the first place. I'm glad you did. There's someone else. Peter, there's got to be. All those years ago, Turvey wasn't in a position to subvert a lawyer, a police officer. No, there had to be someone else, someone on authority, a, a third man, if you like. Yes? The copper, sir. Eh? The guard, the man outside the door. Now, why didn't I think of that? Because you didn't get a scotch in the face. Do you know who he is? Uh, we know who. Uh, Frank Hamer, ex-detective sergeant, but we don't know where, yet. Get to it. Concentration of anger. Oh, when it works, it really works. Wonderful shot, Mr. Hamer. Beautiful shot, simply beautiful. Didn't I tell you I'd show you the best shooting in Scotland? And wasn't I right? You did. And you were right, Mackay. Will you go on now, or go back and split a drum on it? It's been a long day. I think we'll make tracks for home. Ah, right you are. We can keep our eyes skinned as we go. Hello. Fifty miles away from anything remotely resembling civilization. He says hello. My mother taught me to be polite. Hello is English, an alien tongue. If I'd addressed you in the Gallic, you'd have thought me the foreigner. Anyway, I expected you. I heard you coming about a mile and a half back. You're city men. I'll be polite again. Can I help you? Would you like a bite of my sandwich? No. They uh, told us back at the hotel Mr. Hayman was around here. Aye. Oh, eh? Where round here? Take your pick. It's a big country, and all of it Scottish soil. Did your mother, in between polite lessons, tell you about the possibility of being beaten insensible by strangers? I've asked her to help. You haven't told me how. We're looking for Mr. Hamer. Mackay took him off to the North Valley, but they should be back soon. That way. Oh, that's the road they'll take, aye. Now, which one of you fell off the path, then? Come on, I heard one of you scrabbling past to the right of me there, just five minutes ago. Could have been a deer. I know a deer from a man, and it was a man. Just there, to the right of me. Movement. 
Something there. And we're upwind of it, too. Do you? Maybe. It's best to be ready. Now, you keep your aim there. Whatever it is, I'll go round and drive it towards you. didn't see the man? No, I should have, I suppose. I should have chased him. But all I could think of was Mr. Hamer. Poor Mr. Hamer. Yeah, poor Mr. Hamer. He got a shot of him, though. I'm sure he got a shot of him. Of him? You mean he got a shot at him? No, 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 no. Mr. Hamer's one of the new breed. Vicarious excitement. The stalk, the hunt, the kill. But no killing. That is a camera gun. Mr. Hamer got a shot of him. Yeah, that's Frank Goodman. Can you find him? Well, he doesn't know we're looking for him, so he won't be hiding. Yeah, we can find him. Good. And uh, gently, eh? Gently. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, check that for us, will you? Cal, they said gently. What's Goodman? He's a hitman. Right. And he's also a pro. He won't be carrying that. Yeah, he might be going to the job, mightn't he? He'll be carrying that. All right, put it away. Remember where you put it, though, won't you? Frank, how's Scotland? Very tough, isn't it? Like a rubber ball. Just keeps bouncing back. You know, I saw an old Gary Cooper movie. They got at this guy through his religion. Did you see it? No. Yeah, well, he wouldn't talk, wouldn't say a word, until they threatened to bury him in a pigskin. Yeah, hard as nails until that happened. Then he really broke up. Wouldn't worry, Frankie. No? Nah, not scared of anything. Hey, Frank. Not so, Frank. Yeah, I reckon everyone's got a room 101, you know, something they fear most. You get my point? Point taken. Take the next on the right. That could be Frank's room 101 over there. Well, that pub. Yeah. What's special about that? Oh, nothing. Just the people that go in there. You've heard of Billy Knowles. Well. Yeah, a cement man. Well, the guy who buried the bodies in the flyover. Him. Oh, nasty. Yeah, well, he goes in there nearly every night, doesn't he, Frank? Yeah. Well, I've always given Frank the benefit of the doubt. I've never subscribed to that ugly rumor that it was Frank who put that knife in Billy's brother. Oh, 
out in about half an hour. Billy and his mum. Give them quite a laugh when they find him here. Yeah. <laughs> what do you reckon they'll do to him? Well, they won't kill him. Or work him over? Oh, somewhere between the two, I'd say. We'll wish they'd killed him. Turvey hired him. Yeah, he sworn it, attested it, and signed it. In triplicate. So we finally nailed Turvey. Now, the problem is, who do I send to bring him in? Someone who will treat him with the respect he deserves? Oh, well, sir, I mean, we are renowned for our kind and sympathetic nature. Rotten, depraved, influenced by bribery. That's corruption. I was looking it up in the dictionary. I could go on. To infect, to taint, to destroy purity. You should have asked me. My definition's much simpler. <laughs> corruption? That's where the worms are. Looks like they're having a party. Yeah. Let's go gate crash them, shall we? Yeah. Yes, I suppose I do spoil her a bit. But then, why shouldn't I? After all, she's my only granddaughter, and... Hey! Don't worry, I hold my liquor. Ooh! Risky! How's it going up there? Great. Fantastic. It's a beautiful party, thanks. Julia! Hey, what happened to the music? I'll fix it! Why's the music stopped? And what are you doing here? Well, they came through the window. Party's over, sweetheart. We'll see about that. Julia, has the disco equipment... How the devil did you get in here? The window. You mean you broke in? You broke into my home? It was open. By God, this is unforgivable. All right, Julia, Mark, I'll take care of this. You must be mad, both of you. You have to be mad in this job or you go insane. I'll have you broken for this. So Frederick already knows, you know. Yeah, you know Frank talked. Frank Goodman. He uh, told us about Turner, of course. And Hamer. And you. You know, hiring a killer is the same as actually doing it. Which means you killed Tony Miller. Now, we liked Tony. How much? Oh, for God's sake, every man has his price. Name yours. All I need is one clear hour. You've been a company in South America, haven't you? One hour, and I'll pay anything you ask for it. Anything? Yes, yes. Cash? Name any currency you like. Oh, I think I'll sample that pure malt scotch now. You know, very tempting, Ray. Very. I mean, we could have been an hour later getting here. Yeah. Yeah. Then it's a deal? No. No, it wouldn't be fair to Tony, would it? Miller. Ah, but to make up for your disappointment, why not have a whiskey with me, eh? Ah, what are you doing? Handcuffs! Look, there's no need for handcuffs. Oh, for pity's sake. My family are out there. They, my, my granddaughter and all her friends. Look. <laughs> Please, take them off. I'm begging you. I'm begging. What kind of man are you? Kind of men who catch your kind of men. Grandfather? Grandpa!
You know why I asked you to meet me here, the scene of the crime? You could have been foreign secretary one day, Peter. Could have been. I'm not sure that I quite follow you, George. You see, Sir Arden had a conscience which is more than you have. I killed Susie Carter, he said. And all he actually did was keep his mouth shut about it. You're not suggesting that I killed her. You played your part, like Sir Arden, by keeping quiet. But his conscience panicked you into finding out just how safe you were. If you'd left well alone, really had the confidence that I always thought you had, we wouldn't be here now. Instead, you thought you could use my organization to keep yourself safe forever. I suppose Turvey has been making wild accusations against me? Accusations, yes. But there's nothing wild about them. In the back of my mind, I knew it was you all along. I just didn't want to believe it. No one's going to take Turvey's word against mine. In 1953, you were a junior minister. Turvey bribed you to give him the contracts that put his company into the big time. Susie Carter knew about it. And you knew that Turvey arranged for her to be killed. Prove it. I already have. I've got all your financial records for the period. Your books don't balance, Peter. You betrayed my trust. Maybe that's not so important. But you also caused the death of one of my men. I can never forgive that. I think I'd like you to try and run, Peter, so I could shoot you in the guts. You wouldn't use that on me, George. Try me. Then try us. I don't need your help. Not here to help, sir. Just pick up a few tips. Take him. George! Yes, I can be there in half an hour. Yes, a love lasagna. I'll have everything you do, you know what I mean? Okay, see you in half an hour then, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Just going to see Tony Miller's mother. You want to come? Sure. 